Steve Brinster. I live in Warwick, New York. Professional disc golf player. I started playing disc golf in uh, 1994 and played my first event in 1995. Played amateur for about two years and turned pro in 1997. Going, going into the 2013 U.S. Championship, um, I was kind of struggling that year and it was pretty disappointing. But, you know, once I stepped on those grounds, I just had a good feeling inside me. I was playing confident. I had really good practice rounds and uh, that translated right into the tournament. I had a good support system with my family being there, a lot of fans supporting me. And uh, thankfully, I was able to, to play within myself and uh, come down and be a U.S. champion. Disc golf is a game that's played a lot like traditional ball golf, uh, where you start at a tee and you end at a hole. And the object is to complete the course in the fewest amount of throws possible. Unlike ball golf where you're hitting a ball into a hole, you're throwing a disc into a metal basket. We have pretty close to 72 pros signed up. The weather looks pretty good other than it's gonna be a little cold, but the leaves are really popping right now. So we're looking forward to a great event. My name is Andrew Fish. I've been playing a little over three years. My favorite part of disc golf is just being able to make a disc dance. The only limits are gravity and your imagination. Uh, so when, you're, when you can imagine something and then execute it, it's, it's like nothing else in the world to me. I'm a very competitive person. I've always played sports, so it's a good way, to, good competitive outlet for me. It's really the, uh, you know, the community, the people that play it. Uh, you know, the sport itself is fun, but it's really a whole lot more fun when you're playing with a bunch of uh, people from throughout the area. Y'all meet new friends, camaraderie. This guy is my hero. <laughs> just the camaraderie and everything is just, it's great. Absolutely love it. You know, I'm sure that uh, looking to come out of the gate strong tomorrow, um, you know, like to get an early lead and continue to build on it throughout the event, and that's the goal. You know, this is kind of kind of Steve's event, and I think he's won it like four years in a row. You know, but if I could get up there, make a push, be on the lead card, and uh, you know, shoot my best, I know that <laughs> if I shoot my personal best each round, I'll be right up there in the mix. So I'm going to go out there and, and try to do that. Warwick has a lot of signature holes, you know, that's part of what makes it one of the best courses in the world, but um, obviously hole 14 is a strong par 4 from either tee and going to the long pin with the water that comes into play, it's really beautiful. Uh, hole 18 is the lone par 5 on the course, it has a really beautiful tee shot off the long tee, 
So those are my two favorite holes, and uh, you know I, I look forward to them. The truth is, with any good course, that there's there's strokes to be had on every hole. The goal is just to actually try and enjoy all of them. And uh, when you have a place as beautiful as Warwick, especially this time of year, it's easy to do. This tournament usually is, you know, in the past five or six years, this tournament's been in October. And it's a beautiful time of year, the leaves are changing colors. But almost every single year, there's a round where there's 30, 40 mile an hour winds. We, we tee off at, you know, 8.30, 9 in the morning, and then we're done at, at 6. You go through a wide range of weather in the day. Just, you know, try to get the practice in, get putting practice in, go into it feeling confident, and uh, that's about it. I think in general playing smart is playing within your abilities and knowing where you've been consistent in your game. You have to have the presence of mind to recognize the, the winds that may shift and how that may affect your game plan. In the end, playing smart is really about knowing yourself and knowing what you're capable of and then playing within your means. You know, you want to try and keep it simple. You can't control what other people are doing out there. You can only control yourself. And uh, anything that you let them do to you is only going to affect you in a negative way. So just stick to your game plan and uh, you know, do what you do best. Going into the 2013 U.S. Championship, my kids were only about one year old at that point. So Leslie had them in the stroller and she was watching from afar, um, but she saw a lot of my shots. She had caddied for me like every year prior to the kids, every step of the way, practice rounds and in the rounds. And so she knew how many times I'd come close at that tournament and she was still there watching from afar. I wish, I know she wishes she could have been there on the bag, but uh, you know, she was. She was right there by my side. Anytime I needed to look somewhere, she was there. And uh, to be able to have the, the kids there and to uh, you know, hold them in my arms on the 18th green after a victory uh, was pretty special. And you know, in a lot of ways, I couldn't write it any better because they got to be there for a part of it. As far as Steve winning his major in 2013, all of us, you know, his, you know, his close group of friends knew it was pretty much a matter of time before he took down a, a world title or a U.S. title. And there was about 50 to 60 of us watching the live feed, and everybody there was rooting for Steve. And what, I, what I think that that did for this scene is really legitimize um, playing disc golf and, and playing disc golf professionally. Seeing him win that title was, you know, was pretty awesome. It was pretty awesome. Like a king, it feels like I'm dreaming.
I learned to stay focused just from my experiences on the course. I've played hundreds of tournaments now. I play almost all the majors every year. And uh, that experience lets me to just feel comfortable. Uh, if anything, I think it actually adds a little fuel to my fire. It gives me a little bit more focus. I want it a little bit more than I would an average tournament. So now I try and use it as a positive and to use that little extra adrenaline to just getting me into the game. Six time in a row champion. I think there's more wins than that, but this is the sixth in a row, so that's really impressive. Uh, Steve Brinster. Um, yeah, you know, I just want to say that uh, this has been a really long year for me. Um, this, I think I've, I might have played more turns than I ever have in my entire career, and uh, with everything I've got going on with. My business and my kids, it's been a lot of uh, to ask of Leslie. Um, I, I can't thank her enough. Um, it's always great kind of closing out the season here in Warwick. Um, you know, love this place, love this tournament, love this course. So it's, uh, it's always great to, to close it out at home. Love seeing everybody here, and uh, we'll see you next year. Thanks a lot. I mean, being a father is, it's hard to describe. I wouldn't trade it for anything. and. Uh, yeah, just really happy that, uh, you know, when I come home from a long tournament that I get a chance to come home to a family that's uh, there waiting with open arms and, you know, there to, to love me and to, to miss me. And it's uh, so it's pretty, pretty amazing thing to come home to. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so ready to play Frisbee. You want to go play some Frisbee? Yeah. All right. Yeah, they, they really enjoy playing. Um, it's uh, my son, especially, he, uh, he'll, he'll come out there and he spend hours out there with me. Um, so he's, he's got a pretty good little throw now for being a youngin and look forward to developing him, you know, in many years to come. And hopefully he can, uh, you know, have the same love for the game that I do and I'll be able to teach him everything that I know. And uh, maybe one day he uh, could be, uh, you know, a U.S. champion like his dad.